Greetings, fellow classic TV fans, and welcome to the Golden Rage of TV Live. I'm your host, Pat McCormack, and here we like to practice escapism, which is something I think we kind of all need right about now. But tonight, we're going to do it in a healthy way with a very, very special guest. I'm so excited to talk to one of my favorite TV personalities, Mr. Michael Gray. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to bring him, bring him on. We're going to talk about his incredible career. But first, I need to acknowledge a couple of friends of mine. Uh, podcast guys, this came out just this last week. And it's the podcast magazine Hot 50. And I was pleasantly surprised to see a lot of my friends there. Well, actually, a few of my friends there just taking up all the top 10 spots. I should say, in this case, it's the top 11. Uh, get your reading glasses out on it. You will see that number 11 is the Wilder Ride. That, of course, is Alan Sanders and Walt Murray. Love that podcast. Folks, you want to be entertained? Check out the Wilder Ride. Then, if you go up to number 10, it's the Box Officer Podcast. That is hosted by this guy, who you might remember as a guest on this show, specifically Derek Zemrak. And he, we, were, we talked about the upcoming CroftCon that he's doing, and I'll be attending with Mr. Dave and Steve Sundstrom, and looking forward to that. But you look again, just above that, you have a new one that I just discovered. It's called On Screen and Beyond. That's number nine, I believe. Yes. And this is <laughs> Derek's brother. Brian Zemrak. I, I never even knew he had a brother. It was almost like I was living under a Zem rock or something. <laughs> but I've listened to a couple of these of episodes of what he does, and it's amazing. The celebrities that he gets on there, folks, check out On Screen and Beyond. Um, moving right above that, it's Alan Sanders again. It's like, do we ever get enough of this guy? It really doesn't matter because Alan is such an incredible talent on the air that it makes sense that he's there. And even yet again, if you move up to number four, number four, it is this guy, me. No, wait a minute. Actually, the fact is it's BK on the air, which Alan Sanders is the co-host of this guy, Barry King, my buddy. Barry, Barry, Barry. I had to keep you up there a second because the shirt looks great. Um, it is because of Barry King that we have our esteemed guest tonight. So I have to give a shout out to Barry and say just, hey, thanks, buddy. I appreciate the hookup. Um, so Saturday morning television in the early 70s, late 60s, early 70s, was trying a, a new type of uh, technology called chroma key, where they were bringing in live action actors and mixing them up with actual cartoons. And of course, the Croft brothers had the corner of the market <laughs> with this technique. But uh, let's see who else. Uh, the Banana, Banana Splits Adventure Hour had um, the adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which used it quite well, I might add. Um, and even Filmation got into the act uh, with a show that became one of my favorites. Um, you know it. Matter of fact, maybe we should all just say it together, huh? Here goes. Shazam! No lightning. Well, maybe this will help. Our progress will be tracked in real time on a 3D map of the human body. Oh, oh my God, slim good body. No, no, this is absolutely not that trademark character. This is... Michael? Oh, my God. Just a uh, unitard with the systems of the human body on it. On a guy. And a guy named TV's Michael Gray. What? Oh, oh, damn guy. Earful, Jesus! I see I have some fans in the audience. <laughs> Are you kidding? Are you? Lana, it's TV's Michael Gray. Billy Batson from the Shazam Isis Hour? Well, and the Brian Keith Show. Obviously in the Brian Keith Show. Who is Brian Keith? Now you're just trying to piss me off. So... What's up? What, what have you been doing? As you see, my good sir... Uh, CIA puppet shows? Act 
Ting! You Philistine. Michael, what are you doing here? I... How did he even get on the base? He said he knew you. You let an unauthorized civilian onto a CIA black site just because he said he knew me? Well, plus, he is TV's Michael Gray. And as you may or may not know, TV's Michael Gray and I were lovers. If that is shocking to you, so be it. No. Yeah. Tell me I'm I get it. I think maybe you're confusing the word shocking with the word... This! This is shocking! No, that's just gross. Which is also the word I think you're looking for with your old man fetish. Ah, uh, come on, they're not... So that one doesn't even have skin! <sighs> okay, if everyone will follow me into the miniaturization chamber, we will now begin boarding the Nereus. Whoa, wait! Already? Yeah, shouldn't we learn a little more about the mission parameters? Oh, you absolutely should. But we're behind schedule, thanks to... TV's Michael Gray! Woo! And... Scene! Yes, we get it, Michael. Scene. No, you ruined it. No, no, no. <laughs> I think sometimes you oversell it, buddy. Ugh, great. Now we can all suffocate. Excuse me? We only had enough oxygen for eight crew, not nine. So thanks to TV's Michael Gray, we're low on oxygen. Uh, Why is he here? Are you kidding me? Damn it, Michael Gray. It's bad enough we're getting devoured by leukocytes. Well, what do you want me to do? Transform into Captain Marvel and save the day? I'd be happy if you could transform into Jackson Bostwick. <gasps> Nice. The slap heard around the world. Maybe that was a few weeks ago. Um, yes, of course. Michael Gray. I was a huge fan. I know many of you are huge fans. And so let's not waste any more time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my new friend, Michael Gray. Michael, how are you? I'm fine, Pat. Thank you. Welcome, welcome. And, you know, I, I watched that that clip. And I, first question I had to ask you is, is that that is Christian Slater, correct? Yeah. Now, were you guys in the same room doing these voice parts or was that all separate takes? It was all separate takes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. it, you know, again, that, that show, <laughs> that show is really funny. And it, it's great because I, I, the Brian Keith part was great because it Kind of pissed me off too. <laughs> somebody, let's have somebody explain that to them, shall we? But uh, what a, what a neat experience that was, um, I would assume. But of course, your life has been nothing but neat experiences. <laughs> I mean, I like I said, I I can't remember turning on the television in my young age and not seeing you. It seemed as though you were everywhere or being a character actor on all the different shows that, you know, it was like, there he is again. I was just so used to seeing you. And again, you got into television early on. What age, what age were you when you first started auditioning? Well, I, when I graduated high school, I ended up going to Pasadena Playhouse College of Theater Arts. Hmm. And I was there for three years studying acting. And when I graduated, Passing to Playhouse College of Theater Arts in 1968, I started working immediately. I was very lucky. An agent saw me doing a play at the Playhouse. I wanted to know if I'd sign up with her agency. I did. And everything she sent me out on, everything I got, I was very, very lucky. The first show I did was Room 222. Right. And I thought as soon as I got out of the Playhouse, I signed a seven-year contract with 20th Century Fox. I thought, this is easy. I'm in the TV series already. But I only did the pilot. That's when I learned the word nepotism. <laughs> right. I didn't know what it meant, but I found out because my manager told me after I did the pilot, I was taken out of the part. And he said there was two reasons. One, and he wasn't sure which, what it was. Basically, one, they thought you weren't appropriate for the part. And the other one was they said somebody's father was friends with one of the executive producer of the show. And they wanted their son in the show. And that's why they took you out and they put the son in. So I learned the word nepotism. So I still wasn't sure what happened. Was it because I wasn't right for the character or because of nepotism? Yeah. Isn't it all in the family? I, I Not to quote another show, but it's as yeah, though... actually, <laughs> Sally Struthers from All in the Family, I graduated Pasadena Playhouse with her. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, that was a perfect segue then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but so, in, in, in essence, you sold the show and then they said, thank you, you can go now. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. But then again, more interviews kept happening. I, I did Marcus Welby after that, Flying Knight right. after that. 
Right, so right. I was I, doing quite course. a bit of work. I was very, very lucky. I really was. Yes, you know, I was such a fan of this show, and I remember specifically seeing you on it. Now, did you just do one episode? I did, yeah. And and yet it was yeah. so memorable, and I haven't seen it in forever, so I can't remember much about it. I only remember seeing this really cool-looking guy, and that had to be you, of course. But, of course, I got to ask, what was it like working with Sally Field? Was it, I mean... It was very cool. She was a lovely lady. Great mm -hmm. actress, very beautiful woman. I enjoyed it. But what, what really started my career was I did an ABC movie that week called Run, Simon, Run. Right. Playing Burt Reynolds' brother. That's right. And I didn't even get credit for it. And when you look at IMDb, they're still, you know, it's, it's Run, Simon, Run, but I didn't get credit. Huh. And that part really started my career because people were watching the show, especially young ladies, and they contacted Tiger Beat Magazine and Fave Magazine. And they want to know, who's Michael Gray? We just saw him on Run, Simon, Run. So Chuck Lawfer, the owner of Tiger Beat, contacted me through my agent. Yep, contacted <laughs> me through my agent. I went in, he talked to me. He said, we want to do an interview with you and do some pictures of you, put you in Tiger Beat, because kids are asking questions about you. So they did. So they stood, pictures started out to be like postage stamp size. And All then right. more kids started writing in, calling in. The pictures kept getting bigger and bigger. The articles kept getting bigger and bigger. And that really started my career because it was for Tiger Beat and then Fave and other teen magazines all around the country started running pictures of me too. And that pretty much created the little people, the oh, Brian Case right. show. Yeah. Right. Right. I got, a, I got a little something for that. Shot in Hawaii. That must have been fun. It was great. It was. I grew up in Miami Beach, Florida. So working in Hawaii was like being back home again. Sure. It was like Paradise Island. I loved it. I flew over there. I worked for six months. We did 26 episodes and I loved it. I got to work uh, in Hawaii. It was fantastic. I got to work with Brian Keith. I got to work with Shelly Fabre and all the different celebrities they had on the show. It was fantastic. I loved it. There's a and picture this, of me from the little people. Yeah. That's from that era. Great. Yeah. You know, I, I we, we talked a little earlier about your co-star on that show. <clears throat> Uh, yes, Brian, the great Brian Keith, of course. <laughs> and there was a connection because I know Kathy Garver and, and it was like, oh, yeah, she's worked with him. But yeah, there was something about another woman on that series. Uh, uh, Shelley. Shelley. Yeah. Michael, we did have something in common. We both had crushes on her. Yeah. When I was younger, I had I used to watch her in. Uh, I've got the name of the show now. Uh, Donna Donna Reed? Donna Reed show, yeah. I had a right. crush on Shelley Fabre. And then when I found out I was doing shooting the little people in Hawaii and I got to work with Shelley Fabre, I was blown away. It was fantastic. Wow. And there was one episode where I actually asked her to marry me, which was interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she said yeah. yes. I, I actually gave her a little wedding ring, a little tiny diamond, but I gave her a wedding ring, engagement ring. Yeah, but it, it didn't, you know, it didn't happen, but, you know, I oh. asked her to marry me. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know, it's funny. I was talking to Barry King, as a matter of fact, just the other day about some, for some reason, the, the, the subject of songs that get stuck in your head came up. And I said to him, whatever you do, steer clear of Shelley Fabre's Johnny Angel. Oh, yeah. Because if you, and folks, this is a, this is a cautionary uh, tale here. You listen to that song more than twice, it yeah. will be stuck in your head for six months. That was a great song. It really was. It yeah. really was. Yeah. And I had no idea. Of course, I'd heard the, you know, the hook, you know, growing up. You know, Johnny yeah. Angel, you know, I love yeah. you. But then when I was listening, you know, as a musician of 40 years, I, I listened with different ears. And I was like, this is the most incredible piece of music. Mm -hmm. No wonder it was such a huge hit. And yeah, she just, she nailed it. And of course, seeing her singing on the Donna Reed was like, oh God, I love her. I love her. <laughs> she was my heartthrob. Yeah. But let's face facts here. Let's, let, we, we've just got to face this, Michael. You were among one of the greatest classic TV heartthrobs ever. It's a fact. It's a simple fact. Folks, I got a picture to prove it. Now, come on. Look at that face. Who couldn't? What girl would not go out with him? Or marry him? Shelley Fabre, maybe. But 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, again, um, your your acting chops were great, but you had the you had the whole package. You were you were just a really good looking fella. The thing that I the thing that I really liked personally about that that look specifically was the hair, the Michael yeah. Bay hair. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you had you had what we call a mane, and That's it was true. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it was cool. It, I found it interesting because in that era, you know, it was kind of a sensitive thing—the long hair issue. Yeah. And I mean, I know for myself, when I was you know I was younger, but my hair got past my ears. My dad would, to the barber shop, and I'd look, come out looking like I just enlisted. You know, it was <laughs> that was my life. Yeah. Um, but seeing you on these shows, I was like, wow, that's I'm sure it was in or it was becoming more in thanks to the Beatles. <laughs> but uh, you know, you made it almost mainstream. Like I can I can get away with this and not have any kind of judgmental um, <laughs> thoughts from people's parents, like you know, like Marsha's parents. Oh, the Brady Bunch, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I would have seen Mike going, um, um, Marsha, maybe you should tell your boyfriend he needs a haircut. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. When I met Burt Reynolds on the set of Run, Simon, Run, before we started shooting, he walked up to me and said, wow, that's a good one. Where did you get that toupee? <laughs> I said, what toupee? He said, it's a great toupee. It's one of the best ones I've ever seen. I said, Bert, it's not a toupee. It's my real hair. He said, oh, I thought it was a toupee. <laughs> Can I borrow it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bert. Uh, not ready for that yet. Bert uh, was great. Was he was a great guy. Was he? Yeah, I like He was such a nice guy. He really was. Yeah. I love to hear that. You know, there's so many different aspects of you know, being a star where you, you yeah. can really just caught, get caught up in it. And again, that's what I picked up just in getting to know you to prepare for this. And that is that Michael Gray is not pretentious. He yeah. is not, he hasn't got an ounce of, of, you know, don't you know who I am in him at all. And I, I would assume that you have a lot of great friends that just really appreciate that fact about you. Because I'm sorry, you know, you are an icon of classic television and you're going to get noticed. You're going to get attention. And yet it seems to me like you've kept it on an even keel. What do you what do you owe that to? What, what What's your I mean, other than just, hey, I'm a nice guy. What can I do? <laughs> I mean, how did the, how did the stardom not infect you? I'm a very humble guy. I've been that way all my life. Have you? Mm. I really have. Yeah. And I never, you know thought of myself as a star. Yeah. Well, I hate to break this to you. You are. That's just a fact. <laughs> it's, well, it's, unfortunately, my career was ruined after, well, the little people after that, you know, that ruined my career to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then after Shazam was canceled, that was the end of my career. I had trouble getting work because I would go out for mm -hmm. interviews and people would say, we can't cast you in this. You're too identifiable as Billy Batson. So in 1976, that's when I quit the I quit the entertainment business. So the the typecast curse, right? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, now slowly but surely, I'm getting back in it a little bit. My TV series is back on. Tubi TV is streaming it, which oh, is a great. good thing. And great. then I've done I did the Four Archer episodes, which is pretty cool. And I did yeah. uh, Comic Book Men, which is pretty cool too. That helped you know start a little bit more. Right. And then I did three episodes. Three movies called Surge of Power movies. Oh yeah! I just shot the. I finished the last scene, the last one, about two weeks ago. Hmm. So you know they're superhero movies. So I play a character named Willie B, like Billy Batson. Oh, so I'm doing a little bit of work again. It's fun. I like it because for forty something years I did jobs I didn't love. Right. I liked them, but this is a job I love. So I'm hoping it continues. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and at least though you were able to adapt to coming out of the child star issues of coping yeah. in the Hollywood, because we both know it's, <laughs> there were a lot of casualties. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 wanted, I didn't want to bring her up as that because all I was thinking was Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. 
Yeah. Course, the gir- I think the girls were going Michael, Michael, Michael. But for me, it was, it was Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. And I I just finished her autobiography. Holy smokes. She did not dodge the pitfalls of, of that era and of being a child star. Yeah, she was very nice. I enjoyed working with her. Seems like it, you know. And even, I'm glad. When sprayed, even when she sprayed me with whipped cream, I still like working with her. <laughs> I, people are like, what, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, <laughs> yes. We're talking to Michael Gray, folks. The only living man to cheat on Marsha Brady. You know, exactly. That's why she sprayed me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I brought in the date. She didn't like it. <laughs> in the ice cream parlor. <laughs> that would be the dream of just about every young man across America would be to cheat on Marsha Brady. Or I don't think that <laughs> would happen, actually. But, you know, that again, these roles were so memorable that you were a very memorable player even before Shazam. Of course, I know that was your your signature. Um, but it was funny. I, I was going through pictures and I saw this competition and I went, you know, I'm thinking this guy, this guy kind of looks a little bit like Michael. And then I thought I heard you say on an interview that you actually became friends with him. Is that, yeah. is that true? Davey and I became buddies actually. He, Davey was a host of a show called Pop and I was one of the guests on it one day. So I actually hung out with Davey. And back then I was singing songs too. Right. Most teenage idols were singing songs. So I got to sing a couple of songs on, on pop. So Dave and I became buddies. And one day I was in the apartment building I lived in in West Hollywood. And I was downstairs in the lobby. It was a security building. I was downstairs in the lobby getting my mail. And all of a sudden somebody jumped on my back <laughs> and wrapped their arms around me. He was hugging me. I looked over my shoulder and it was Davey. Oh. So I hadn't seen Davey in quite a while. But I met David way before that when a buddy of mine named David Pearl was friend to Davey and I got to go to his house a couple of times and hang out with him. But then I got to do pop with him, which was cool. Plus we met many times at the Waffer Company, you know, Tiger Beat and Fave. But the day he was in my building, he jumped on my back. It was so cool. <laughs> I'm so sorry he's gone. David was such a nice guy. He really was. Yes, you could tell. You could yeah. tell. And, and unfortunately suffered the same plague as you, couldn't walk down the street street without getting chased by dozens of screaming young girls, right? That yeah, plague. That was an issue. I There were times I couldn't leave my building. The security were downstairs, they'd pick up the phone and they'd call me and say, Michael, there are people downstairs waiting for you outside the, the lobby door, don't come down. So I look over <laughs> my balcony, I look, I see downstairs, I was like the fifth floor of the building, I look down, I see about five or six people sometimes waiting out front for me to come out. So, <sighs> well, it's the price. It is what it is, you know. That's the price. But I, I thought I heard you talking about being in Las Vegas. There was an incident in Las Vegas where was it? That, was that where you got locked in the broom closet? Or oh, what that was, was uh, that was at the Forum. Oh, at the Forum, the Osmonds concert. Yeah. Right. Yeah, my manager Chuck Lawfer said to me, we're going to the Osmonds concert at the Forum, you wanna go with? I said, sure. So we walked in the, in the Forum, we walked down, I was in about the third row center of my seat, on the way down, I got to about maybe the eighth row from my seat, and all of a sudden, people start yelling, there's Michael Gray. Next thing I know, they started coming up to me, pulling at my hair, pulling on my clothes, and the Osmonds were on stage, and security grabbed me and threw me into a broom closet for the whole <laughs> show, I couldn't come out. But it happened in Vegas, too. I was at a hotel in Vegas. And again, people recognized me and started chasing me. So I ran through a door, which I didn't know was the back door of a theater. I walked in the theater. I ran in the theater to get away from these kids. They were chasing me. And the Osmonds were on stage again. So <laughs> and I, so were you. <laughs> so was I. I ran across the stage. <laughs> and, oh, no, not again. <laughs> 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 that kind of reminds me of the hard day's night when the when Paul's dad came up through the floor um, or his grandfather. I don't know. But just suddenly I'm on stage. But it's funny. It's like you would I would assume at that point or prior to you'd be totally panicked. And I was like, who cares where I'm going? I just got to save myself. I mean, was it ever something that you were truly scared that you were being 
what's the word? Um, oh, fanned, fanned, <laughs> stalked, fan, fan stalked. I mean, where where it was a mania. It was Michael Mania. That's it. That's the yeah. one I was looking for. <laughs> Did <laughs> you ever get truly scared by that or any instances like that? Well, I did it at the forum because they were actually yanking on my hair. So it right. hurt. You know, it hurt. <laughs> Absolutely. They, I wanted can't a piece, they wanted a piece of my hair. They were pulling at it, trying to pull it out. Uh, so it hurt. Yeah, that's I, it's scary to me. It's like I, 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 I did some work with a, on, on a soap opera, um, General Hospital, during the turn of the century, which is a weird thing to say. Yeah. But we were a band on the show, but we were also a real band. And there were times when we would go out and it would be really almost a, a mania kind of thing. Because soap fans, by the way, are rabid. They love their soap stars. Um, yeah. But I got a little taste of that. And I was like, man, I wouldn't mind doing this forever. <laughs> you know, just... my buddy, Les Tremaine, my mentor on Shazam, did General Hospital. Right. Oh, yeah, that's right. Less Dr. Amazing. Shazam, yeah. He did quite a few episodes, yeah. Oh, you know, I'm throwing up a couple comments here. Who's that guy? Never heard of him. BK on the air. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. We don't want to talk to... BK, oh. Barry's a very cool guy. I've done his radio show several times. He's a very nice guy. A uh, yeah. strange brew wants, would like to know if you ever tried out for the Keith Partridge role. No. I was thinking now that that sounds like Wesley Ewer. Wesley Ewer. West, I've known Wesley since the seventies. Yeah, he was with me two weeks ago on this, and yeah. what a what a sweet guy. He's a very nice guy. Again, yeah, amazing. We did a couple. Guy. We did a couple of Comic Cons together before the virus hit, and I hadn't oh. seen him in years, many years. So I was so surprised. I saw Kathy Coleman and Wesley. I got to see Wesley. After many, many years, we're hugging each other, saying hello again. It was very cool. I like they Wesley make, a lot. Did they make you get in the raft? No. Yes, good. I think I'm going to end up in the raft in a couple of weeks. They're coming in. They're coming up in this area. It's like, you got to get in the raft. Got to go over the falls. <laughs> I'm hoping to do more Comic-Cons with him because I'd like to get in the raft. And I will. If I do another Comic-Con with him, I will do a raft. I will do All a right. raft. Then. I'm doing right. one in Connecticut in July called Terrificon. So I don't know if this is going to be at that one or not, but I'm looking forward to doing that one. Here, oh, here my friend Emily makes a good point. You know, pretty tough to have a social life at that time. Yeah. So I kind of I kind of wonder if that means that once it did die down, were you somewhat relieved that you were able to kind of, you know, get back to normal? Or was it just, darn, I want my career back? <laughs> I want my career back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I uh, love the, it. I've been doing this since a teenager in Miami Beach. Right. I love it. I want to do it again. It's my favorite job. I love it. Oh, here's one from Miss, my buddy, Mr. Led. Yeah, I don't know. After this amount of time, do you get paid for reruns? I haven't gotten a rerun check in a while, except for Archer. Mm, great. But after Shazam... For quite a while, I did get residual checks because Shazam was being run in countries all over the world. Actually, in right. Germany, I was in Bravo magazine. They ran a lot of stories about me in Bravo magazine. Then they did a vote one time. To, they wanted their, their readers to pick their TV star of the year. So I got Bravo Award in 1974 and 1975 for being the TV star of the year in Germany. Wow. How so, neat. But it was being shut, run in so many different foreign countries. I got a lot of residual checks back then. Right. It was a success. I mean, and, and you were obviously a big, big part of that. Um, I I loved the show and it, it just had everything. How, how can you not love a show that has a super Winnebago? I mean, the one that. Yeah. I mean, where is that? I got a shot of this. Yes. <laughs> the Shazam Abago. Shazam Abago. <laughs> yeah. I love doing that show. I love working with Les Tremaine. He was absolutely fantastic. And we had so many amazing guest stars on the show. Totally amazing. Oh yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, I remember. I, I, of course, it's been it's been a while since I've brushed up on these. But again, I I always love them. You know, you had two different Captain Marvels. That kind of confused me. Yeah, Jackson but, and John Davy. Yeah, but um, you know, I know which one my favorite was. 
the one you slapped that guy Archer for. Oh, I loved Bostic. He was just he was he held that role down. I thought quite well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, it's fantastic. And, and Tremaine is I was a big fan of that. The thing that yeah. um, I was was interested in was the the elders, of course, who you would you would always talk to at the end of the show. Yeah, get the moral lesson. Yep. Which again was a great reason Shazam Shazam was so so good because it was tailor made to teach kids right from wrong, right? Yeah. When I do comic cons, I every time I do a comic con, I hear from literally dozens of people every single day. They tell me how important Shazam was to them when they were kids. A lot of them tell me stories that were heartbreaking. They were abused. They were beaten up. They were picked mm -hmm. on. Whatever, and. The way they got through life was by watching Shazam on Saturday morning. They told me some really terrifying stories. Oh. But it makes me feel good that the Shazam made that much importance to them. I mean, it's just so important to them. It made them feel so good. I love it. There you go. It wasn't just another acting job. Right. You were actually making a difference. And what a great legacy to take with you based on that. I mean, yes. that's, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, again, it's it's all about it's not about what part you had. It's the it's the memory you left. The yes, the legacy. Again, I use that word because that's what you've created with this. And your legacy, of course, spans the spans a lot of other shows. But you know, when when anybody thinks of this show, of course, they think of Michael Gray, or is it TV's Michael Gray? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember hearing you on, on BK on the air. You, you did a, a phone in. And he always just refers to you as TV's Michael Gray. Yes, he does. And I think yeah. that's that's nice. I wonder if he really wants to be called TV's Michael. Like, like the man belongs to TV. He's TV's Michael. Wait a minute. <laughs> but but it does kind that's of work. When I did when I did Archer, I asked Adam Reed about my name TV's Michael Gray. And I asked him if I could use it, if he minded if I used it on Twitter. TV's Michael Gray. He said, why not? You are TV's Michael Gray. <laughs> so that's what Adam said to me. Adam's a very cool guy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's true. Um, getting back to the uh, to the elders, and I wanted to touch on that real quick, because I do know that there was a, a pretty famous celebrity from classic television playing one think of those. think so? Adam I, West, maybe? No, that would be it. Yeah. <laughs> I was blown away by that. I, I yeah. think I knew that for quite a while, but just, you know, doing some research on you and looking back, it's like, look, there, holy smokes, it's Adam West voicing. Now, which yeah. which God was he? Which of the immortals? I actually don't know. They kept it a secret. What? They really did. Yeah. They didn't brag about that Adam West was playing one of the elders. So you didn't know that you suppose, of course, we could go back and watch the show and kind of deduce based on the yeah <laughs> on the on the tonalities of the voice yeah. that hey, that sounds like Batman. Adam was cool. Adam and I back in the seventies we were doing auto shows together instead of oh. comic cons, pretty oh. much every weekend. So I did several of them with Adam and Bert Ward too. And one oh, day yeah. we did a show down in the southeast somewhere. I'm not sure which state it was in, but we were, we were coming through the airport to fly back to LA and security was going through Adam's bag and they went through my bag first and they went through Adam's bag and they pulled out a bag in his bag full of cash, picture sales from the auto show. Then they looked at him like, why do you have a bag of cash in your suitcase? Then they pulled out his Batman mask and they looked at him like, Almost like, are you a bank robber? You have a mask in here in cash? So what's going on with this? And Adam said, I'm Batman. <laughs> and the guy, said, the guy said, sure you are. I said, he is Batman. This is Adam West. What's wrong with you? He's Batman. I'm Billy Batson. So Adam and I laughed all the way back to California in the plane. We couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. Well, I guess I would, Batman. <laughs> I would assume the guy finally believed him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, where's where's the drugs, line, Batman? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's such a funny line. I'm Batman. You're what? Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it. You can hear him saying that. Yeah. Oh, it was. It, you know, I had the pleasure of meeting him. Uh, I would say it was probably a month 
just over a month before he passed. Yeah, it's too he, bad he, he passed. He yeah. came up to uh, Santa Clara, the uh, Silicon Valley Comic Con, and I was like, "We've got to go meet Adam. We've got to." We just—I felt like this. This may be our only chance, or maybe our last chance. And boy, was I right! Yeah. And yet, he spoke to me. It was such a sweet guy. Um, he was a very nice guy. He really was. Him and yeah. Bert Ward, they were like two kids. They were. Bert, they, was, Bert was cool too. Yeah, he still is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bert's a nice guy. Well, I I know that that Shazam, of course, was the was the pinnacle. If you want to say, and, and then of course after that, you you went okay. Well, now I'm typecast, so I think I'll get into flowers. Yeah, I did that. My wife and I ended up buying a flower shop. We ran it for I don't know twelve years or longer than that, and it was a lot of work. We worked sometimes sixteen hours a day, but okay. we had some very cool clients. My favorite clients were Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne. <laughs> I love them. They were so friends with. We were such good friends with us. Their office was actually right next door to our flower shop. Oh no! So we, got, we got to hang out with Sharon and Ozzy a lot. They invited us to their house. They invited us to Palm Springs with them when they got remarried. Wow. So they were lovely people. I love Sharon and Ozzy. So they yeah. never fought in front of you, or there were no any, never any blowouts, kind of like never. the TV show. No, no. <laughs> we even had Barry Gordy as a client too. Oh that no, was kidding! Cool too. Yeah, we used to go to Barry's house a lot to decorate it for the holidays, hang out with Barry Gordy. That was pretty cool. Mr. Motown. Wow. Yeah. That was See, cool. so the perks, the perks continued, right? Yeah. I mean, in that yeah. sense, they were like, oh, I'm going to give this guy my business because I was a fan of his ever since I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what I would be doing. I'd be buying all my flowers from you. <laughs> but um, wow, that's just fascinating. A fascinating life. You know, again, all yeah. these great shows, of course, Shazam, which, you know, I have a ton of people that were huge fans of. Matter of fact, let me see if I can find a couple quick questions from these great people. Let's see. What do we got here? Oh, this just it's just a compliment from Odds Badkins. Bodkins saying, you know what? You rock. I would I would tend to agree. Yeah, uh, there's other fun stuff. Let me just kind of go through here. Oh, here's here's a good question. My friend Tom, he's not a hungry jerk. His, his name's Tom. He wants to know if you're do conventions, which brings up the question, is there anything coming up that you'd like to, yeah. like to talk about? Well, the next one I'm going to do is Terrificon. Mitch Halleck, the owner of it, invited me to come. So I'm doing, it's a Connecticut. It's a Mohican Sun Hotel and Casino in Connecticut. Mitch invited me. And my booking agent, CelebWorks, Chris Aniri, who owned CelebWorks, booked me in it. I'm looking forward to it. I even get a chance to work with Keone Young, who's an actor, and he went to Pasadena Playhouse with me, too. Mm, I haven't seen I see. Keone in decades. I'm looking forward to doing Terrific Con. It's going to be a fun con. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I did want to ask you something. That, that you brought that name up, and I thought of Kim Kahana. Yeah, I know that name. He was Chongo on, on Danger Island. Oh, yeah. But more importantly, he was one of the most sought after Hollywood stuntmen. And it it was rumored that he was actually the flying nun huh. when she was up on the crane. Yeah. Of course, they didn't put Sally Field up there, um, but he was a small stature and they kind of covered his face up. And <laughs> he was the guy playing the gal who could fly. Um, and I was like, wow, but I got into his story and holy smokes, just amazing. Amazing. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I, again, don't quote me <laughs> because it's just something I, I saw, I researched and saw that. And, and again, his story is beyond belief. I, I don't even want to begin it right now. Um, let's see what this was. I was five years old in 1974 when I discovered Batman. A few months later in September that year, I first saw Michael Green Shazam on Saturday mornings, and he changed my life for the better with all the moral lessons that I learned. Wait a minute. Am I, am I adding something? Yeah. <laughs> Again, I think that's just, you know, my friends pouring out the love, pouring the love out to you, to you Michael. You, you really are a, a staple of so many people's lives from that era. And gosh, you know, again, 
I, I, it's what I love doing this nostalgic um, material for because it was the best time. You know, it was the, a simpler time, obviously. Yes. And and yet, you know, we all had that sense of, of you know, everything is cool. Life is joyful. And, it, of course, you portrayed that on television. Um, and just kind of like for me, once I started doing this, I started attracting people that liked the same stuff. It just kind of uh, builds. And then you realize, man, there's a lot of people that like this nostalgic, geeky, you know, you know, back in the day, geek and nerd were not, they, were, they weren't good words. That's right. <laughs> call, call somebody a geek. Yeah. It's like, uh, what'd you call me? You know, nerd. Now it's like geeks and nerds run the world, man. We didn't have yes, them. they do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's right. And, and there's even people that do like, like weekly radio shows talking about all this geeky, nerdy stuff. I mean, they must be geeky, nerdy stuff too. Yeah. Matter of fact, surprise, Michael. I got a buddy here. Hey. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Barry on, King. Hi, Barry. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. I was good. glad to pop in and, and be a part of this uh, tonight. I'm glad you guys are having such a good time. That's very cool. Good to see you, buddy. I like you a lot. Well, I love yeah, Barry. Yeah. Barry was like, Michael's such a great guy. You're going to love him. And I was like, well. And Barry's a great the, guy, too. I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> well, guess what, Barry? You were right. You were yeah, right. This is. has been an incredible well, experience. If you'd have told me back in 1974 when I used to uh, wait all week at school for Saturday to come along so I could watch this guy <laughs> and uh, and uh, Les Tremaine ride around in the... Uh, in the in the camper and and uh fight crime and and take care of the evildoers and save people from forest fires and stuff like that if you'd have told me that i had that one day would know him be my buddy and have his number in my speed dial on my phone i would have just laughed my butt off but i do and i'm <laughs> really happy now cool well, thanks and, and and of course he leaves out the fact that we were the guys Barry and I, we've talked about this. We were the guys that actually ate that sugar sludge at the bottom of our cereal bowl after, oh, yeah. you know, we finished out all this. Yeah. You finish mm. off the cornflakes and what's left is the sugar sludge, right? That was the I, best part. Yeah. We, we talked about this. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and I'd always be down in that and be like, shazam, shazam, right. sugar rush. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was great. Uh, oh, man. Those were the days. Well, Again, I was I was talking to I was showing talking to Michael and, and everybody else about the uh, podcast uh, that you do. It's actually the radio show, and then you turn it into a podcast, and it's number four, number oh, yeah, four the on the Hot Fifty podcast. Hot Fifty. I, I'm glad to to hit the list. I think I've been on on the top ten the past year, and as people will, will go on the website and vote for podcasts that they listen to, and I'm very grateful that people vote for it because I kind of cheat. A lot of people do podcasts uh, from scratch. I kind of take a radio show, take all the commercials out, and put local old classic commercials in there and mix it in and repackage it as a podcast. So mine mine doesn't take as much work to do. So I feel kind of guilty about it, but but people seem to be responding to it and I'm very happy about it. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Well, and Michael, if, 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 you, if you didn't know is Barry, we just, we haven't met in person. It's kind of weird because they're close friends, but we did, we haven't met in person because social media has been our connection. Yeah. And next thing I know, he's like, Hey, I want to put your segments on my show. Haven't How many? Either. That's how I hope I can get at a comic con in Georgia so I can meet Barry. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's going to happen. That, would be, was, that uh, would be great. Uh, if you know, if we had, a, and like I told Pat uh, a few weeks ago when I was on, we're talking about Star Trek on his show. If we had a few more squares here, we'd look like the Brady Bunch on this thing here on the, on the screen. I think it's great. We're really, oh, yeah, really. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. We talked about that already, Barry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I hate to rehash stuff. Uh, what's great about, I don't know if you guys have mentioned it yet or not, but uh, a whole new audience can, can see Shazam now, thanks to the streaming channel Tubi. Tubi's running right. Shazam and they're, yeah. they're beautiful copies. I think they have the remastered copies. They look great. And they are. Uh, they're in HD. Yeah. Tubi, you yeah. can watch it. Yeah. Well, it's, isn't it great that they, they take the time to do that. Now that brings up a question, Michael, 
Was it shot on film? Yes. I mean, that's a stupid question. Was videotape even used back then for these shows? I, and then, of course, I'm thinking, it's filmation, Pat. What do you think? Yeah, it was filmation. <laughs> yes, it was film, yeah. It wasn't videomation. It was filmation. Right. <laughs> and, I, and then I'm like, wait a minute. That, but then again, I'm thinking the Crofts, I'm guessing, see, that stuff didn't have, of course, your show had a lot of outside. Yeah. Almost everything was outside. Almost everything. Yeah. yeah. In 200 degree weather, if I'm not mistaken, correct? There was an episode where Les and I were working together in the camper. It was 115 degrees outside because every time we shot was a summer. We were out in the desert somewhere. It was 115 degrees. And we're, we were inside the camper doing our lines. And all of a sudden, it was so hot in there because the lights outside also to light up the, inside the camper so the cameras could see us, basically. Plus the heat. All of a sudden, the windshield cracked from the heat. Wow. So Les said to me, which was obviously, it was edited out. He said, what the F was that? <laughs> <laughs> he looked over at me and said, I don't know, this scared the ass out of me. <laughs> <laughs> so and then the director yelled, cut, it's a kid's show. You guys can't say that. <laughs> wow. I, I would give a big ton of money to hear audio of Les Tremaine saying, what the F was that? That would, that would be great. Yeah, it was edited out. No one knows what happened to it. People want to know what happened. They're looking for the Christmas reel, actually. We, you know, you speaking know, of, of the camper that, that you're talking about, I have to make a correction to Pat. Pat, I'm sorry, I got to correct you on something. The, the super, what? Don't it, tell me it, it wasn't was, a Winnebago. Don't right, you tell it, me that. Open, open road camper, not it Winnebago. It was an open road. Right. Yeah. A lot of people think it was a Winnebago, but it was an open road. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shame. Sorry. I call myself an expert, too. You realize that? I had to look it up. <laughs> it, oh, good. So I don't feel so bad. And, so, right. and, 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 and the emblem was covering something. I, I'm sure I wouldn't have. Yeah, the Sam emblem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's people my excuse. Say, people should talk about that. They say, here comes his camper with the Shazam emblem. Well, <laughs> it's obvious who's in, who's in it. Right. <laughs> the hot camper. The, yeah. uh, the hot The steam camper. room. I was That's watching just... an episode on Tubi the other day, and uh, it was a, uh, Michael and Les were in a park and listening to classical music on a record player in one of the scenes. And uh -huh. of course, Billy wanted to play rock music, but let, but mentor was listening to classical and the little bit that you guys did on that episode, the comedic timing was, was fantastic. You guys were actually great together and you had great chemistry together. I loved working with him. He was such a classic guy. He and I became very good friends. He was such a great actor, such a humble guy too. What a legend too. He was such a wonderful guy and I loved working with him. We did work together well. And what an awesome fun. voice, awesome voice he had for radio and audio. He was Yeah, standard. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's something I'm still working on. <laughs> these guys keep showing me up, these DJs and, and podcasters. It's like, I can't sound like that. Come on. You're the guy that's in the rock band that was on General Hospital, for goodness sake. Come on. That's 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 pretty cool, I think. Yeah, but I was it the guitar cool. player. I wasn't the yeah. singer. I was the guitar player. But, of course, Michael was telling me he heard – on the uh, on on Twitter that I am the greatest interviewer alive or something along that line. Yeah, and I went. I'll go with that. Somebody said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go who who are you, you talking to me? <laughs> you should have seen my last show. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's what you would be saying, but um, maybe I am getting a little better. I don't know. I it's like this. This is why I appreciate you so much coming on this, Michael and and Barry. I, you know, I appreciate you too much, <laughs> but you know, I learned, I learned just, you know, how to carry myself and you guys are so graceful and especially you, Michael, I, I've watched a few things that you, you put out there. It's, there was one thing where you were walking a 700 pound dog. I thought that was just, that was so entertaining. It was, it was oh, Moby. My, my friends, my wife's best friend. Yeah. Her dog, Moby. He was a big dog. Yeah, <laughs> and he of course, was a dog. oh, I look like it, but he didn't want to move for you. <laughs> yeah, I was yanking on his leash. I got him. I got him. I love that dog. He was so sweet. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it shows your it shows your disposition, which is a very kind man. Um, so let me just let me just cruise over here to the qu comments real quick. See if we got anything new. 
worth putting up. Oh, what do you got here? How is it working with Butch Patrick? What show did you work with Butch on? Shazam. Butch was on Shazam yeah. as a guest star. As a guest yes. star, right? That's what I said earlier. We had so many amazing guest stars. Everybody Butch came through. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And so um, Danny Bonaducci was on it. Yes. Butch was on it. Dabs Greer was on it. It's amazing, amazing talented people come on the show. Yeah, that answers really, that really answers great. that quote. Yeah. Um, gosh, I hope he's doing okay. It's kind of odd what's going on with Danny. Um, yeah, I heard about that. Some kind of mystery yeah. illness. Do you, are you aware of, of his autograph bandit uh, yes. thing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so brilliant. Barry, have you heard about that? Yeah, I heard a little bit about it, yeah. So what he'll do is he'll go to different towns and look for old record stores and seek out Partridge Family Records and secretly sign them and then stick them back in and give a clue as to where the store is. That's great. And then people would come by them. And there was one instance where the store owner went, uh, I'm not selling you this. <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, he unloose, unleashed the douche man. Boy, oh boy, <laughs> he come after that guy. Wow. Well, all right. I'm not seeing much news. Oh, here's here's one for you, Michael. So, do you keep in touch with Jackson Bostwick? Actually, I don't. No. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll I keep in touch up. with John Davy, and I keep in touch. We do a lot of comment cuts together, and we're friends. We keep in touch a lot, but Jackson and I don't. Unfortunately, we don't. Oh, that's too bad. Well, okay, here's a here's a lighter question. <laughs> Could you understand anything Ozzy said? <laughs> Everything he said, yes. Yeah. I have no What's, problem with that at all. Well, some flowers, Michael. Just just make them some flowers. Just, just make them make them good flowers and it'll be good. It'll be good, Michael. I can hear it. <laughs> well, uh, oh, here's a good question. Michael, being the teen idol, who did you idolize when you were growing up, coming up? Anything like that, that in nature? Well, let's see. Going back then, my favorite actors back then was Marlon Brando and Rod Steiger. Oh yeah, they were my favorite actors, and I idolized the Beatles too. Actually, I got to see the Beatles when I was in high school. Oh, they did really? the Ed Sullivan show yeah. in New York, and they did the Ed Sullivan show in Miami Beach. Oh and yeah, I got invited to go, so I got no to see the Beatles perform. Yeah, in 1964, I think it was. I'm not sure, something like that. Yeah, I I remember that. I, I remember seeing footage of that too, which was amazing. Their yeah, their vo version of that boy in one microphone or this yeah. boy, excuse me. Whew. Almost got some hate mail there, <laughs> <laughs> but again, just wow. I even today, it's like I'm not in a very good mood. I'll go to my Beatles channel and go for it. Now I have to ask you this, Michael, since we're talking about them: early Beatles or late Beatles? Actually, the th anything to think about the Beatles, I had an, a friend of mine was an agent in Miami Beach where I grew up. And she was hooking up with the Beatles at the time when we were in Miami Beach shooting the Ed Sullivan show. And they were going to come to my house and go swimming in my pool, my parents' pool. Because I don't know, it was Look or Life magazine. I forgot, did some uh, episodes with them, a couple of uh, uh, promotions with them in one of the magazines in a pool in Miami Beach. And they were going to use our pool but it was too close to a bridge and they wanted it to be private. So they, t they said, we can't do it at your house instead, but they were supposed to be at my parents' house. And that was going to really be cool. Uh, you know, oh, unfortunately wow. it didn't happen. You know, that's great. Yeah. I don't <laughs> think that would have been forgettable. Holy yeah. smokes. Wow. Oh, our, oh. our backyard was right next to a bridge. So cars going over the bridge could look over me and seen the Beatles in our pool. That's why it didn't happen. And I could hear, I could see it now. These young girls swan diving off the bridge. It's Michael Gray. Exactly. It's Michael yeah. Gray. It's the Beatles. <laughs> it's the Beatles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, here's a, here's a cool question I wanted to throw at you, Michael. What was your favorite episode, if you had one? I like Little Boy Lost. That was one of my favorite ones. But I liked I liked every episode I did. Honestly, every episode was so good. The writers were so good. The directors were so good. Everything was good. I liked every single episode. But Little yeah. Boy Lost is one of my favorites. Wow. Yeah. Uh, again, 
I thought it was so cool that, the, you know, it was still all about teaching kids a moral lesson. They and need that now. They could do more shows like that now. It'd be good. Don't you know it? And I, I as a matter of fact, I was talking to Wesley Ewer, and he did Dragon Tales, created the Dragon Tales. Yes. My kids and I were fans of that. I was Mr. Mom, so you know, I couldn't help it. Uh -huh. I had to watch Dragon Tales. But, you know, again, if you make it entertaining and still be helpful and, and teach the morality, you're right. We do need it now. Michael, so, Michael, Michael will tell you, too, uh, Pat, that uh, Shazam had uh, PhDs in the credits working on that show uh, oh, that's yeah, right. with, with uh, Lou Scheimer and the production crew of that show was, right. uh, was yeah. such a great live action show for kids. That's why I think it endures to this day. How brilliant. Yeah. How I brilliant. was telling Pat when I do comic cons, I might've told you too. I don't know, Barry, almost every single comic con I was doing dozens of people every single day would tell me how important Shazam was to them when they were kids. And some of the stories were heartbreaking. My parents abused me. You know, my father was an alcoholic. I was beaten up. I was picked on by, by the block bully, whatever. I had a horrible life. The only thing that kept me going and kept me alive, some of them said, was watching Shazam, watching the moral values of Shazam every Saturday morning. And they told me that at Comic Cons. It makes me feel so good. Wonderful yeah. stories. It makes me feel so good. That's great. Yeah. Well, they could have virtually saved lives, you know, when you look at it that way. A couple of them told me that, yeah. They said, I was thinking of killing myself because I was so abused and beaten up by people and my parents were nasty to me that Shazam every Saturday morning, grab a bowl of cereal and watch Shazam, <laughs> that kept me going. You know, yeah, yeah, that sugary yeah. sludge that uh, BK and I were like, yeah. we were going to start marketing that stuff. It's so amazing how television shows can have that kind of impact. I remember a, a story that uh, William Shatner told about, uh, he, uh, he ran into a guy driving a cab in New York and said, uh, you know, I want to tell you something. Uh, when we were prisoners in Vietnam, we would recite episodes of Star Trek while we were POWs to kind of keep our sanity. Wow. Uh, just uh, just in, in in a POW camp. And that's what kept us going and kept us alive was reciting and redoing Star Trek episodes that we knew from memory. So television's got a wow. big impact on people. It really does. Yeah. That's a very interesting story. It really is. Well, it, yeah. and is it just the, along those lines, and I was doing my studies on my episodes, Jay Ward, um, you know, who did Underdog. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you recall, Underdog had the superpower pill in his ring. He would take his pill in his ring to change yeah. into, and apparently kids were like, oh, so if I took those pills that are in the medicine cabinet, <laughs> I too could be underdog. <laughs> and he, he would go to conventions and or or to fan events and, and parents would come up and say, you know, I had to pump my kid's stomach twice because of your damn show. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I could be underdog. I'm gonna eat tons of aspirin. That's I didn't <laughs> I didn't eat spinach till I saw Popeye. So you know it worked both ways. Yeah, that's right. That's funny. Yeah, he loves spinach, Popeye. <laughs> yep, and it worked yeah. for him, Barry. Did it work for you? Yeah. Well, it worked for me, showing t just showing me how horrible spinach tastes out of a can. I don't like it like that. <laughs> pretty yeah. bad. That's I not do, the way. I do want to say something about Shazam, though. Uh, watching Saturday morning television the way I did in the seventies, uh, mostly cartoons. When Shazam came along, and and uh, Michael and came along as Billy Batson and Shazam, I was proud when I started watching it because I I could walk up to my mom and puff my chest out and say, you know, mom, I've got a show with real people in it now. They're not cartoons. <laughs> and right. she seemed to be impressed by that for about five seconds. So I felt very proud that I could have a live action television show of my own to watch. Well, Barry, yeah. I think you, I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it was a show with real people uh -huh. and real humble people people with humility, people with tremendous talent that didn't flaunt it, didn't get caught up in the Hollywood drug scene that was so prevalent back there. Michael, you're yeah. a credit. You're a credit to the era, the acting style, the, the people of that era. And, and I just want you to know, we all love you to death. And it's just amazing what, what you've done. And, and I mean, I'm, I'm over the moon that you joined me on my, on my live stream. It's just been fantastic. Thank and, you. I'm glad you invited me. Thank you. Well, again, I want to thank you. And I want to thank Barry for hooking me up with you because, yes, he was the guy that, you know, I, I just thought, hey, hey, Barry, could you ask Michael Gray if he might be willing to? And it was like two minutes later, he's ready. 
And then, yeah. of course, the correspondence. I, I, I've never had anybody correspond so well with me in preparation to doing one of these than you, uh -huh. Michael. So, again, you're you're just a wonderful person. And, again, I want to thank you for being here. We're going to go ahead and wrap it up now because um, we've got you. lives to live. And, again, good luck on all the future uh, things that you got going on, hitting those Comic-Cons, which are starting to come back now. And, yeah, and finally, yeah. Gosh, I know from everybody that's here that's watching, it's a great big thank you. Thank you for everything, sir. And with that, we'll say, I can't say Shazam again, because that'll just get everything started again. <laughs> Man, say it backwards. Can you say it backwards, Barry? Uh, no, but Michael can. He did it in one of his YouTube videos. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's right, I did. That's very funny. It and went, it goes... Like, <laughs> menage, menage. Yeah, exactly. I said Shazam backwards, and next thing you know, you saw me flying around as Captain Marvel. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, we'll try to avoid that. I'm, I just thought it might be a good closer for this <laughs> interview, but instead, I'm just going to say bye, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you next time. How's that? Does that work? You got it. All right. Awesome. I think so. Take Thank care, you. Pat. Take care, Thank Barry. You. You Thank too, you, Michael. Sir.